Hello, I'm Craig from Carsalton Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2019 Expert Curriculum. Download Microsoft's files linked in the description to work through them together as we conclude Section 2.2, Format and Validate Data. Let's get started. With your 2.2 workbook open, go to the Grouping tab, which is the one right in the middle. What we're going to do is run the Auto Outline command to group the worksheet data. So uh, select uh, any of the cells within the table or array that you want to have grouped. Your auto grouping function is in, or excuse me, your auto outline is in the group. So we're in the, the data tab in the ribbon in group, the drop down arrow, and we have auto outline. If you want to do this with the keyboard, it's going to be Alt A, G for group, and then A for auto outline. When that's completed, what you'll notice now is that there are these little group and ungroup arrows, uh, plus minus signs. So Excel has taken a look at this data, has recognized that we have a total here, has recognized we have another total there, and it's grouped these rows together. Now we can expand or co close these rows by hitting the plus or minus sign. So hitting the minus reduces it, collapses it down. We can hit this one here and it'll collapse that second one down as well. It's done the same thing with the columns for us. Uh, we can see that it's recognized January, February, March, all rolls up into a quarter. So again, that can be collapsed. Second quarter can be collapsed all the way through. So what was once a fairly, uh, I guess, for some an intimidating array can be collapsed down to just the key data. So if it's for a manager, they just care about your quarterly results. Uh, you can have it all grouped down so that they can re review it. I do use grouping quite a bit with how I model. Uh, so it's a process that I'm familiar with. The other way in which you can group them instead of individually, but as a, uh, I guess in block you could say, is by the numbers here in the upper left hand corner. So if I hit one, what happens is it collapsed down to the very top level. If I hit two, it expands out the first level and shows me the second level. If I hit three, it collapses now that second level of detail. Same thing on the rows. If I have one, it collapses it all to the highest level. Two expands that out and in this case three shows me everything. Now for our next task, we're going to group uh, cost of, excuse me, advertising rent and supplies together. Um, now again, these don't roll up into anything, so I would be hesitant to do this in real life. Um, but what we want to do is to select those rows. So we want advertising, uh, we want rent and supplies, and then we're going to group them together. So again, in the data tab, um, we selected group and then we go to group. And now we have added this additional level of grouping. You'll notice that we see now a four for our additional level. Now. I always use keyboard shortcuts because I'm doing this all the time. And how I would do this, I'll undo that quickly for us, but how I would do it is I would select the rows that I want to group. Now a shift and the space bar together will select the whole row. I would then arrow down the rows that I want to have included, and then an alt, a shift, and then a right arrow will add a group level for that particular level. Same thing can happen on, on columns. Uh, in this case, to select the whole column, we'd hit Control shift uh, If I wanted to group just February and March together, I would select them. Again, Control, or excuse me, Shift, Alt, and right arrow increases the grouping. If I use the left arrow, it reduces them. So you have that ability with the, the keyboard to control those things. The last thing I will show you is how to group and ungroup, excuse me, how to expand or collapse the grouping with your keyboard. Because uh, I, again, I like to keep my hands on the keyboard and rather than going up here to group and ungroup uh, and taking my hands off the keyboard, you can do it with your mouse here. So by hitting um, uh, Alt and A into group, you can see up here, it shows me the show detail and hide detail. So now all I need to do is hit my H and it collapses that group for me. In fact, in both directions. So I can select these three rows, Alt, A, and H to hide. Next thing I can do is if I want to see that detail, I can go Alt, A, and the J key will expand it. So now it shows uh, those rows for me all by using the keyboard. 
One additional tip I will show you, again, probably not likely to be beneficial on the exam, but if you use this um, in uh, your, your kind of day-to-day -day business, you may prefer these collapses. So in this case, it's collapsing down. So these three, when I collapse, and, and my, my indicator is the grouping indicators on the bottom. If I go into outline here, this little pop-out box, I can actually have the summary rows be above instead of below the detail. So now this collapse happens on the top rather than on the bottom. Okay, so that may suit how you uh, work better than the default stage. It's worth knowing how to do both, not likely to be tackled on the exam. All right, next we're going to go to the subtotal worksheet. So that's our next tab here. And just like we saw in the last example that Excel can automatically group or, or uh, outline our data, it can also provide subtotals for us. So here we have a fairly large array. Um, let's go to the bottom here. I'm just going to hit control down arrow. So we're down here into row 453. If you had been tasked to say, hey, can you give me a subtotal for each of these categories? It would take you a considerable amount of time to do that on your own. Uh, so what we can do is instead rely on Excel's subtotal functionality. So subtotal is on my data tab. It's over here in the outline section. So let's click on subtotal. All right, and what this dialog box does when it pops up is we can tell it where we want it to provide a subtotal. So we could do, uh, in this case, customers highlighted, and um, that will, if, as far as our directions, that will work. But we could have it done by country, by region, uh, and then at the every time that changes, it will provide a subtotal for us. So you'll notice that it's just basically moving by all the header categories for us. So let's move back to customer. Next, we can choose what function it's going to do. Right now, count is highlighted, and all that would do is it would count uh, how many instances there are for each customer. In this case, what we want to do instead is to sum, uh, but you'll notice that it could provide the average for us, a max, a min, uh, but we'll change it to sum. And then where we want it is in the total field. So now again, we have all of the column headings, and we're going to go down till we find the total. We will select that. Uh, it'll replace any subtotals that are currently existing. We could have it at a page break if we wanted to, but uh, we're not going to print this off, so that's not necessarily important to us. So let's click OK. All right, so now when we look at this, so here is our first group of customers. Excel has now added that customer name along with total. You'll see this gap here where it hasn't calculated any values. And lastly, here is the subtotal that it's provided us. Uh, so we can double check this if we want. And so I've selected those cells. I can see here in my sum, oh, excuse me, my sum over here in the corner, it's showing 127180. And that matches up with this subtotal value here. So it's gone through for each of these. It's provided a uh, outline uh, for us as well. So I could collapse all of that customer. I could go to number one and I could collapse all of them. If I go to number two, it's just going to show the subtotals for us uh, rather than the details within each. And then if I go to three, it expands all of them for us. So it's a fairly powerful feature that probably saved me 30 or 40 minutes of trying to go through separate and do the calculations directly myself. All right. Lastly, we're going to move on to our remove duplicates, which is the final tab in our workbook here. And we're going to run the remove duplicates function. So again, this is in my data tab. We have remove duplicates uh, right here in my data tools section. Again, with my keyboard, I can go to Alt A for data, M for remove duplicates, and that's easy to remember. Uh, and so what happens is the dialog box that pops us, uh, it's recognized that we have an array here, so it's going to uh, stick with the array that we are have our active cell selected in. Uh, the first thing that we're going to notice is we could unselect all of these options or select them all. Also, there's a note that uh, whether or not the data has headers or not. Uh, so in this case, we do have header values, so we want to make sure that's toggled on. Then what it does is it allows us to select which columns we want the duplicate to be concerned about. So in this case, they're all selected. It will only remove it if all of the columns are the same. Um, if I didn't care about that, if I only wanted to, 
to remove anywhere where there's a country duplicated, it would get rid of all of these Argentina ones except for one. So in this case, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that only remove it if all of the columns are the same. So we'll click OK here. And it has a note that it's removed six duplicate values uh, and that 450 remain the same. So this is handy. I'm always a little nervous uh, when Excel removes stuff for me without really letting me know. I would kind of prefer it to highlight the rows that are going to get or uh, remove the duplicate rows first and uh, kind of like a find replace where you can review each of them and decide whether you want it removed or not. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's it's handled what's been asked in the practice task. The values have been removed and we have everything covered. This wrap, That wraps up section 2.2, all three parts. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in our next set of videos.